Welcome back, everybody, to the Gears Esports Spring Major Fallout here. Joined for the very first time with Ryan and Ashes on the desk. We got the winningest coach in Gears Esports history and the second winningest coach in Gears Esports history. Notice the emphasis on second place. No, I'm just kidding, Ryan. I love you guys both. And I, uh, you already know we had to bring the two greatest minds and coaches in Gears Esports together for an analyst desk segment. Ryan, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. This is the collab you never knew you needed, but you always need to see one day. I only approve this, by the way, because Envy and Optic merged in real life. So I, I, this is the only reason I approve this and let this through. But here we are, 2022. The world is healing, and we are here on the Analyst Desk. Shout out the Gears fam. Shout out my CB47 fam. Thank you guys so much for joining. I'm so excited to kick the day off. That's awesome, man. Uh, Ash, how you feeling, brother? I'm feeling good. I'm uh, I'm still reeling off of the fact that I didn't get my first prediction right, but it's okay. We bounce back for the next series. It was a game. It was a game five coin flip lost by two rounds. Could have gone either way. I feel you on that one. I also say that because I also picked Fury one. So right there with you, my dude, but uh, it's awesome. And uh, I guess that's a great point. You know, greatest rivalry in, in esports, console esports history merged. So I guess we had to bring both of you guys together, which is awesome to see. But hey, our next matchup is going to be a fun one. We got Rise going up against Rebel in a matchup that obviously most people would expect Rise to win. But if any team can play upset today it certainly is rebel ryan no it certainly is man this is a rebel team that has so much skill across the board so much veteran leadership so much experience right but we always ask ourselves a question coming to these events right is this team able to get over the hump right identives the only player from the latin american region to win an event can he bring these boys through you already know he plays so so well come event time right you see him in pro league he makes good plays but then he, the events come around the money's in the table and he plays just like a super saiyan so i'm excited to see what we have a sort from this rebel team of course they're playing a team in rise who's the number one seed coming in they're looking very hot of course nick asked the question in the last sort of you know post show right can this team get it done on a sunday and we're gonna see this weekend yeah let's go ahead and bring up the rebel player cards we can see the rest of the roster and ryan break down the continue to break down the roster here uh, of this squad for me i know you talked about a few players right yeah, definitely. I mean, you can see the, the chemistry between Crack and Cardi. Those guys have been playing together for so, so long. They joined forces with Identis a few events ago. And then you have Exploits, the most recent addition to this team, Exploits. Kind of regarded as the best sniper we have in Gears 5, an incredibly skilled player from those past FNI teams. So this roster can be very, very scary, right? When this roster's, when, when their comms are strong, when they're firing at all cylinders, this is a very, very tough team to beat. On the flip side, this team can get a little emotional sometimes, right? They can get a little bit down on themselves. So when this team's firing, they're great. When they're not so hot, it's a different story. Yep, on the flip side, we got Rise, another team with kind of a lot of emotions, but a lot more maturity as of late, Ash. Yeah, I mean, this is a roster that you all know very well because they've been around the block. They've been in the grand finals. They've been in the semifinals. Rushies, obviously seasoned veteran champion himself of Vexies. Uh, I mean, what else can you say about the Movement King? Detox coming into this roster a couple seasons ago and just bringing it up to that next level. And then Insim coming back, bringing in that raw sling power and that extra little oomph they need to hopefully take themselves to a championship. Yeah, I think you broke that down perfectly in terms of what they all bring to the table. The only thing I would add to that is, you know, Detox, he's a player that was kind of mid tier, was not able to break into top four back in Gears 4, was, you know, I'm actually the same rise squad that was just on the up and up. He came to his own in Gears 5, and I think it's probably one of the most uh, inspiring and one of the best come-ups of any player, and is truly a king. It's truly a dominant player in terms of how he impacts the map, and many would have argued, yeah, he was the same player in Gears 4, just didn't have that roster alongside him. So it's been fun to watch this team kind of ascend, but the big question is, can they ascend to the summit or the peak of the mountain to a first-place finish for the first time in Rise in Gears Esports history? Let's take a look. Though I obviously have to get through Rebel first, so let's look at the map picks and bands here, starting with the band. Bands. Take it away, guys. Yes, yeah, so we're going to see the district control ban coming through from Rebel. The one thing that obviously sticks out is going to be that ban on canals. We know how good Rise is on canals. And if you're Rebel, it's kind of an unfortunate one because canals actually seems to be one of Rebel's better execution maps because of the fact that they have exploits, right? And on canals, you kind of get that automatic sniper. Exploits, like I said, probably regarded as the best sniper in the game. So having to ban that one out because of how strong Rise is on it definitely hurts. But of course, when you look at these two teams, right? We know that Rise is incredibly strong in respawns. Execution was, despite having a winning record, sort of their, their quote unquote weakest mode in Pro League. On the flip side, Rebel, they had losing records in the respawn modes, a little better, you know, winning record and execution. So this is one of those tough matches. But to me, the biggest thing that sticks out is the fact that they have to ban canals. And then with our picks, Ashes, walk me through a match we're going to be seeing today. Well, that was a good call, but we're going to start off with Regency Control again, and this is going to be Rebel's pick. I'm very interested in this pick. I mean, like we talked about, Rebel is one of those teams that if they have a lot of momentum, if they're feeling good, they're going to be playing good. And this is a map where, you know, that flow is going to be crucial, but I do think Rise might be a stronger team on that map. We've got Checkout Execution as Rise's pick. Uh, like Ryan said, you know, Execution is quote unquote their weak mode, but I, I really don't see that being too much of a problem for them here. I think this is a good map for 
for them to flex their long-term uh, relationship with each other as players. And we go into Harbor Escalation. That one to me is a little bit more of a toss up. It's gonna come down to those weapon placements, but I do think that, you know, it's it's a pick from Rebel, but I think it might go in Rise's favor. And then if we get there, Ritual Control for map four, Rise's pick, and then again, a Clock Tower Execution for that map five. Yeah, I love me a game five clock tower execution for the bread we saw it in the last series. And obviously it was really one sided with TQ dominating. Something tells me if this one goes to game five, it'll be a little bit closer on that game number five. But we'll see if it can get there. That's for sure. We, of course, are now going to chat through what we have is franchises keys to victory, starting with Rise. What are the keys to success here? So Rise really needs to stay disciplined. They need to out-rotate out the other team. They need to team fire and really just play to how they know their strengths are and impose those strengths upon the other team. If they stay disciplined, they're going to be looking like the Rise that we know and love. They need to keep the fight at Winch on Harbor. So this is going to be really crucial for them. If they can win that fight on Winch, Detox and Rushies are the best at that Winch fight. You've got crazy movement you've got crazy gun skill it's really hard to beat that duo and that winch control is going to be so crucial for the rest of the map so that's their keys to victory and you know no one knows this team better than franchise former captain of rise on the flip side we have rebel uh ryan walking through their keys to victory yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is going to be encouraging Cardia, making sure he has a good performance, right? And the question kind of that, that Fran poses is, will we see the San Diego form Cardia, right? Cardia was an incredible player at that San Diego event, and he, to me, is kind of the X factor of this team. You know what you're going to get from exploits. You know what you're going to get from crack. You especially know what you're going to get from identives. Cardia is kind of always that wild card, right? If he's playing at a high level, this team is incredibly strong. If he's not kind of picking up the slack, they tend to struggle against some of the more skilled teams, especially a team like Rise. So he's going to be a huge X factor here. And then with always with this Rebel team, when you have X exploits on your roster you have to control the power weapons right you have to play into those strengths exploits the best sniper we have in gears 5 right now make sure he gets that weapon in his hands your chances are going to just be so much better when he has the rifle absolutely and for those that weren't there don't remember cardio was on the astral esports squad in san diego that actually played against franchise on the main stage and was this close from being the first latam team to hoist the trophy before reciprocity came back and won three straight so obviously a crucial crucial x factor for the team replaced demon who obviously was a beast way back when excited to see what cardio can do to take this team to new heights and with that said time for predictions i'm really interested to get your guys thoughts as to who you think is going to take this one i know uh the obvious choice is rise but are any of y'all gonna be picking maybe the upset ryan start with you i'm gonna go with rise they looked very very strong yesterday of course rebel like i said they, they don't have quite the strong record on the respawn modes meanwhile rise has an incredibly strong record in respawns there's more respawns in a cycle than there are executions so to me i am gonna go with rise i do think rebel did a good job choosing the maps i was kind of looking at some of the past stats in pro league and they did choose some maps that definitely play a little more into their favor but i do just think right now rise is looking like a higher class team ashes you know, I'm going to have to agree with you. Uh, something that really swayed me over, though, if we go back to yesterday and when Detox did his post-match interview, that was the demeanor and the conversational skills of somebody who is calm, who is confident, and who is ready to win. That told me that this Rise team is going to be a different team than what we've seen in past majors. This is a team that's probably going to make it to Sunday, make it to those grand finals, and maybe beyond. So... Of course, I have to go with Rise, and I'm going to say 3-0. That was a great interview, by the way. Detox, I need, I need more of those out of you. That was a fantastic interview, so make sure you keep yeah. doing those. Yeah, that really was. And I got to agree with you. Look, every Gears player has confidence and speaks to confidence. Sometimes you can just see through the, the, the confidence for the sake of confidence, and sometimes you can tell when it's raw, it's real, it's authentic. And in Detox's case right there, he, he truly believes that him and his three teammates are the best four players in the game, the best team in the game. So I, I got to agree with y'all. I got Rise taking this one. I'm going to say 3-1. I want to give Rebel a map, uh, but we'll see if they can take one, especially because the map pool does kind of help them out at least a little bit. Ryan, how about you? you you going 3-0, 3-1, 3-2? Um, I think I think that Rebel gets a map. Like I said, these are these are incredibly, incredibly high skilled players. This is still a very good team with a lot of chemistry. Like I said, I just think that Rise is playing at a higher level right now. But I do think given some of the maps that Rebel did manage to get through, I do think they can get one of them for sure. Makes sense. Well, what a statement it would certainly be if Rebel is able to upset Rise, or on the flip side, if Rise is able to handle this with a 3-0 win. Hey, I'd love to get the thoughts of two additional folks that are on their talent team, the casters of the match. Let's go ahead and bring in Colin and Jacob, MVPR. Gentlemen, what are you guys thinking? How are you doing, first and foremost? And second, you guys think that Rebel has a chance here? Colin, start with you. 
Uh, I'm doing absolutely fantastic. I appreciate you for asking, John. But look, I couldn't doubt the two guys on the other side of the screen from you. I have sat more times in an audience with both Ryan and Ashes and listen to them basically say something and then watch it happen on big screen. And I'm like, how? What? When? Where? And then they're like, watch, it's going to happen again. And I'm going to be like, don't say it. And then I look up and I'm like, why did he say it? If he just doesn't say it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Appreciate it. By the way, you guys are looking Both sharp same. today. I'm loving these shirts. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I had to, you know what I mean? Because that's kind of why I wore this shirt. You know what I mean? Paul, you called it like Championship Sunday or Saturday. That's Championship Sunday. Today is Saturday. These players got to take a note from the shirt that I'm wearing and be a predator. They got to be a shark <laughs> in the sea of Gears Esports Ooh. and take a bite out of their competition. And even though I think Rebel does have a chance, Rise has one player that's looking to return to this type of form right here. To get down and dirty like the ghost hey. gaming bad Ooh. boys days. Oh. Rushies is about to come out swinging. No matter if it's 3 0, 3 1, he's not even going to break a sweat. You time out the on the flip side. There's identives. I was going to say, I should have brought the, the Viva, I, I, the Viva I, I identives. Love identives. <laughs> I love identives, right? But the thing about that is. Rushies has superstar after superstar who are also having MVP caliber performances on the season. Vexies primarily. Rebel has just been struggling. They've been so inconsistent, honestly, since they formed as a roster many, many moons ago. And those are still plaguing time and time again with the roster changes, with the things that just constantly go wrong. I, I don't know if they just have what it takes to be the full package on the winner side, at least. I don't know if you want to wish them to return to Ghost Gaming, Jacob, because uh, I don't think Ghost Gaming ever beat the best team in Gears 4, unlike Ryan's team who did. Ashes team, they never got beat by that team. It is is what it is at the end of the day. You know what I mean? They were so far ahead. You got to give respect where respect due. You know, Ryan deserves that same respect, but we were the third best team without a shadow of a doubt. We were the closest team to almost beat Octic and pool play, but once again, that doesn't matter. This is true. That's true. It's not my fault. Explosive drop 6,479 downs with the retro. It's not my fault. I can't You got any hand that. grenades? Oh, there it is. There it is, man. Oh, oh yeah. Almost. Oh, yeah. I love it. And as Ash pulls up that trophy, this is this is where I also, re- you know, remind everybody that then they became NRG, went to San Diego, and lost to Choche. So, you know, I digress. This is NRG squad. You know, they really ended up on top. Let me tell you, they really did. Ash just ended his coaching career on top. You know what I'm saying? All right, boys. That's going to be it for us. I'm throwing it to y'all. Akala, we lost in PR. All you, baby. By the way, Uh-oh. PR, when you okay, said that you oh. got to be like my shirt, I thought your shirt was floral. So I was like, they got to be flowers? <laughs> I'm hella confused. No, it's sharp. Those are sharp. Oh, it's jaws. jaws. Over oh, you guys. Yep. Deep blue sea, baby. What's up, everybody? Look, I love getting to hang out with them cats and chop it up because they do it better than anybody on the planet. But somebody that's about to chop this game up and let you know exactly how things are going to go. It's myself and the one and only Jacob MVPR. I'm sure these players are ready. I'm sure you're ready. I can't wait for somebody to hit that beautiful blue skittle and get this thing started. I can't wait for it either, man. And this is the thing here. Rise, they know they're coming into this one as one of the top-ranked teams throughout Gears Esports, the regular season, performing well on E-Days. Rebel knows this is also going to be an uphill battle. And even though they talked about Identives being a part of that Ghost Gaming squad, rightfully so, he has the mindset of a champion as well. I've always told these guys, whether it's Rushies or Identives, this is not going to be an easy match. You're going to win rounds you shouldn't win. You're going to be happy about it. You're going to lose rounds you shouldn't lose you're going to be sad about it it's about trekking forward having the confidence and the endurance to just keep on going we'll see if they have the confidence we'll see if they have the endurance it's gonna have to start on one of the biggest most pretty most open most gorgeous most glorious maps we have in all of gears five it's gonna be regency control for map one between rebel and rise and Early in this one, I'm looking forward to seeing if Rise can continue to do what Mr. Detox told me yesterday they enjoyed doing on control, which is jumping out of those big point leads and then forcing players to try to come back from behind. Yeah, they usually get themselves such a massive lead. They're able to kind of throw away a couple hills here and there before they finally shut it down. But you see the 3v3 going down on this initial. Ident is being forced back with the flash. And Vexy's getting aggressive. That's going to be first blood onto Crack. Immediately turning to try to burn a couple more players down. And that's going to be three straight players dead from Rebel. Looking to make it four as the chain revives are being forced out. And whoo, Rise have definitely woken up with a chip on their shoulder today. Oh, without a doubt, Exploits is going to have to go through the top side of the map. Look at Inzem trying to cut him off with the pass. He's going to take a little bit too much of a bite there. He's going to chomp too much in his mouth. He's going to get taken down and out, and they're going to send two more players back down to the bottom side. 
where that first initial hill at the Rose Garden spawns up. Exploits, Mbar in hand, revs it and shoots one over the top of Avexis. Avexis caught between a rock and a hard place, namely Identus, but he gets some help. He gets him caught, he gets him down, he gets him out. 25 points remaining into the Rose Garden. Big body shot there, could give Cardia the advantage to push on in, but he's gonna have to wait. He gets some help, he gets one. He's got another one to have to get. It's gonna be Lenny and Enzim. Big body shot on two misrolls, two shots on. Cardia, they better start encouraging him like Franchise said so. Yeah, I better have heard Identifus in the mic go, Buena, baby, keep it going. Fuego has detoxed with the misroll outward. He gets taken down, and this is a moment that Rebel needs. There's only nine seconds left. Left. The hill is about to rotate on over, and with that elimination, they have cemented themselves on the hill, but Exploits gets caught out. They have three players charging from the bottom. They have Detox slowly moving in towards the top. As long as they play their cards right, they have a 4v3, which they're slowly but surely taking advantage of, but Cardio is able to get one. He instantly gets shut down, just along with Identives and Crack, so once more, Rise, waste no time getting the hill theirs. Quick little rotation here by Rise, sending Rushies down low for the new shot grenade. Beautiful flash th throw as well. The down on Exploids is there. They get the kill on him as well. Three players up top will start to pressure into the hill. They're going to see everybody from Rise start to rotate back toward the hill as best as they can, as quick as they can. Detox rolling back, playing all the way into the backside of the spawn area. Lancer out, gets the down, gets the finish as well. That shock was pretty devastating, but so is Crack in the CQC. He'll pick up one and then start to rotate down to the bottom side of the map here and try to overtake, I would believe, the close respawn. Yeah, honestly, that was just kind of tough. Looks like Rebel got stuffed there. You talked about that shock. It was absolutely perfect. Didn't allow them to continue moving forward as Inzim and the rest of Rise are continuously staggering out the deaths on rotation. Cardio is doing what he can. Finally taking out Inzim. Avexi is going and take, hold, trying to hold his ground, but he knows going forward is not the play as he continues to backtrack. And everybody knows the best offense is a good defense as Avexi shows why. Incredible job there by Avexi's now identifies backside of the couches here is going to have to play some defense against multiple members of Rise. Rushies flies at him, gets the one shot full red, but does not get the chunk. Detox, meanwhile, gets his head split. So does Avexi's. Inzem is going to go down next, and that's three up, three down, and quick, fast, and in a hurry succession. Excuse me, all four up and all four down. Rebel. They're starting a rebellion of their own. They're trying to fight back against the people that were once dubbed the Kings of Control Rise. Very, very similar situation, but not exact as Identives takes out Inzim, buying them more time on the actual hill because Rise, they're going to have to figure out where their push is going to come from as you see Inzim spawning as far back as possible. He's going towards the low side, so I'm sensing a little bit of a split push calling two towards the low side, a Vexes and Detox in towards the middle, and then Rushies towards the top side. Identives tries to take another shot there. One more left in the chamber for him to have to deal with. Not going to be able to get any shots on just yet. There it is. He rolls back with exploits, shooting across the 90 degree. He's going to get pinched here. Double shot on and down. Rise. He'll retake the hill. Inside of it as well with the close respawn for whatever time is left to be dealt with on it. And they've snuck Rushies on over to that tea table on over to that next point point number four on the map if you're just counting from one on up smokes are about to fly and they're going to try to lance her out a little bit try to get some damage initially onto these rebel players actually rushes with a little sneak play here i like the slow up he tried to go to the quick walk so that he could just not be heard but he gets called out from the 90 degree and taken down rise they need to have an answer back here one or two kills will give them the advantage back in this fight Vexi goes down, he takes all that fire. Detox backtracking, trying to get the revive. He knows their strength in numbers, and numbers they shall have as the Vexis continues to put the downs in. The damage is out, Cardia falls as well, but two more players, Identives and Cracks, slowly but surely towards the backside, make an impact as Crack finally goes down, but the damage is done. No defense is gonna be allowed to get set up until now. Identive is gonna be the last player falling. Two more players of Rebel will be able to stand onto the hill, but it's gonna be Rise who stand tall. Continuing to play back here, you see right along with them, Avexis with a Lancer with two players to his left-hand side, one playing at the front of the tee and the other one playing back into that respawn area of point five. This is glorious for Rise because even if Rebel were to break in here and, and get kind of a control hold, the hot side of the map that Rise is gonna respawn. Oh, what a shot from the M-Bar! I think it got damage onto both players because it looked like it got blood splatter from everybody. He needs one more shot to connect here to try to get that down. 
Oh, they get a double down over the top of the cover. That fight's gonna continue with X-Boys cleaning up that elimination. Crack knows he has to try to backtrack in his steps because that's where the reinforcements are at. The farther he goes forward, the less help he's gonna have as he probably gets the call. Players are weak. He's trying to finish it. A flank from Identus at the perfect time because Crack misrolled. He gets taken down, but not out just yet. The revive is instantaneous. They continue to move forward. They know Enzim's the next target. They're putting their focus there, but Cross from Rushies is out. Not enough to be the hero as they find the elimination onto Enzim regardless. Now we see another rotation in Identives with that Lancer out. I believe Identives has got that Ghost Gaming Lancer on his back right now, so you wanted to see the return of Rushies to the bad boy Ghost Squad, but it looks like Identives has tried to take that moniker early and often in this one. They are down by about 40 points in this. Here comes Rise on the retake. Flash is going to come out. Crack is going to be pushed off. And that'll be a down onto him. Good kill by Rise. And now they're looking toward the middle stairwell. Detox needed a little bit of help, but gets the finishing blow. Now he's going to pull the snub, try to get the down onto Cardia. Double bounce in, misses the first, goes to the second, misses that as well. Turns, burns on exploits, and now Cardia, he finds himself staring down the barrel of at least two or three Nashers from the boys of Rise. Cardia knows, probably gets the call. The players are coming towards the backside. It doesn't get aggressive, absolutely perfect. Rebel has turned up the teamwork here towards the mid portions of the game as they continue to put down fire. Shotgun shot after shotgun shot. Multiple players arise or fall, and Rushies, he cannot do it. He gets shut down as well. Double kill from Crack. He goes back to back on both Rushies and Avexies to cement themselves on this hill. And if you look at the time that's left, there's only scrap time of 40 seconds as soon as Rise is able to spawn back up. So you got to imagine, Call it. they don't want to let it all go on over to Rebel, but they also have to start simultaneously thinking about the future. I think what Identus has to be concerned with here is the fact that he's put himself kind of in no man's land. He's all by himself at the top of the stairs. They might try to bull rush him, try, try to ape him out here and try to get on the top of him and take him down, but they're not going to do that. They're going to allow him to run away. He's just going to continue to get out of dodge. I mean, look at how far Identus has run from where he was about five to seven seconds ago. He's made it all the way across map and is now set up in that back pillar position behind the couches. Where you see a lot of Lancer players set up, but he's going to try to use these sight lines. Is that a frag grenade? Hey, it is. It was a frag grenade landing at his feet. Hello, good night. Talk about it later. He's going to run away from that one again, and they're just going to continue to try to play their lives here. Play for the damage, Jake. Yeah, right now, Rebel has been doing a good job of slowly but surely coming back into this game, chopping it down by 12, then by 6, then by 20 here on this next hill, keeping Rise, only scoring 11 on that last one, but they are now going to be forced back. The spawn point went over to Rise. Rebel has no choice but to retreat, regroup here, assess the situation, figure out where the majority of their numbers are at before they go. Enzim picking up that shot grenade is going to give up valuable information, knowing they're lacking a man directly on this hill. We have to go Go, and we have to go now to make use of the timing. I want to see what they do here. A couple of downs are coming through, but Rebel is still holding on to the hill. Only 20 point differential goes in for the back A of Xyz gets one big shot there, but gets double downed. And that'll be Inzem off to the 90 degree, just protecting his teammate. But I don't do said. You do realize I still got this power weapon, big boy. You realize I can still put shots onto you with it. Last shot in the chamber actually pays off for him. He switches over to the snub now, waiting to try to get shots on anybody rotating up into that position. Crack, flying around the map, just kind of roadie strafing around, looking for the help that he might need. 3v1 toward that side of the stairwell. Rushies goes on the flank, full red, gets downed, and now is dead. Beautiful tumback kill by Cardia with the help of his teammates. They let two more bleed out. And Jacob, Rebel is now taking the lead. And they're not going to bleed out the rest of this hill. They're actually going to wait just a moment because they're going to have to rotate to the bottom Rose Garden, try to get set up and prevent Rise from taking it back from them. You gotta imagine this, since hill number three, Rise scored 23 to 35, 27, 33, 11, 31, and 12 to 46. Time and time again throughout the past four hills, Rebel has outscored Rise every single time and now give themselves a 13 point lead and counting, but Exploit's going down, Detox going back to back here. It's gonna open up that window of opportunity. Rise continues to get aggressive and stay moving forward. All four players of Rebel will be sent to the Shadow Realm back to respawn, but with 60 seconds left on this hill, Colin, that's more than enough time to spawn up, get the information, and make a great team push. You see Rushy's here trying to get a shot on. Back A gets the down. Now rolls up for the cleanup. Now pushes forward yet again. 
and will help get the help needed to get those kills. Avexi's had to drop the frag grenade, but gets the kill there. Now Inzem, Mbar in hand, is going to go to protect his teammate here with 30 seconds left. They could continue forward. Continue to try to keep this in their lead, in their favor as well. Cross the 200 point Rebel, across the 200 point marker before Rebel. Somebody flies right at Inzem. Inzem gives a little bounce, but the help is there. Avexi's right as the wingman. It's that big kill that allows them to hold on to it. They cross the 200 point threshold early and they have the correct spawn side, Jacob. Yep, first time since kill number two. They held Rebel below 30 points, but they held them to 10 exactly. And already they're trying to make that rotation on over the other side of the map. Ends up connecting with Cardia. There goes that draft. You feel it breezing in. That's the window of opportunity that Rise has with that elimination as Crack trying to bounce back and forth between the windows, keeping a target in mind. But there's just too many options here. He gets taken down. And you can see a Vexi's leading the hand into that one. But the identives with this M-Bar, again, Rebel has a chance to slow it down, especially with those frag grenades and make the right play. Let's see what Cardi does here. Stacked up with exploits to his left, looking for the possible push in here. Mbar being revved up toward the backside, looking for the body shot, gets it to go on a rush. He's now he's going to turn his attention to the big window, but look at Avexis. He's going to interrupt the entirety of that process. Crack, staying alive in that situation. Gets the chunk, gets the shot on. Now the first down comes through. Inzem looking to help his teammate. Two different 1v1s taken, and what has been won by Rise? What has been won by Rebel? Inzem still inside of the hill, looking for some help, calling for some help, reaching for some help. Needs the hot tag. Needs somebody to get to his corner of the ring, but he won't come in time for Rebel. It'll be there for Rise. They continue to hold on to the hill and dominating this sector. They're going to be up to the 260, 270 marker. Crack goes to the backslide and gets shut on down. This is something we were talking about, kind of being in the game on the side of Rise, but once it comes towards the ending portion, act number three of this movie, that's when they flip that switch and turn it on tenfold like ever before. The final 50 seconds needed for Rise to score here. Everybody moving forward on the side of Rebel, setting up for that next, but Rise, they're hot on their heels. They don't want to let this position go to waste, but Avexis gets snuck. Not too much to worry about, though, because there's 10 seconds left on the previous hill before it rotates over. Let's see what identives here is here does now does here now English language ladies and gentlemen 101 here looking to looking to rotate on over to the bottom side of the map there's a big chunk by Enzem beautiful little rap shot make sure that he's not hopping into that shock as well good job checking his corners identives trying to play through the smoke here he's gonna get marked and now it is a full feast for rise as three players will take him down i believe right now on the map you're seeing a 3v4 if rebel can get that revive off but they're not going to now 3v3 knotted up with rise having a close respawn yet again this is where rebel struggled they didn't get the information and the intel quick enough to be able to fight against the respawn of rise they do it this time Exploits tries to rotate up, but my goodness gracious, God almighty, that was a oh, whole no. heck of a lot of bullets. Bro, he sent, he sent it on his own. Now, the consequence is in. 3v1, Identive's nowhere to be found. Cardia has to at least take one with him, but he gets shut down, not even a chance. Once again, Rise have full control, but the thing is, it's not winnable off this hill. They can get damn close calling, but Rebel at least have that much of a cushion to lean on. Well, what what uh, what Avexis and Inzem and all the boys from Rise are hoping to do is, is put them in that situation where Rebel just kind of has to fly at the hill one after the next. You can begin to snub, you can begin to Lancer out. You put your opponent in a situation where they can't wait. They, they have to get into a hill for a neutralization to prevent you from winning. They need a few more seconds to really make this an okay retake attempt. Oh, what a shot! Yo, don't do it! Oh my goodness gracious, I almost lost my whole mind there. Every brain cell I had left was just about gone. A rush He's, he's inside next. 18 seconds to go for the map. One win for Rise. And it looks like Rebel, they're going to lose one player there in that exchange. Now looking to try to get it down onto Crack. There's another one by Detox. They get the third kill. I mean, that is just, that is, I hate to say it, Jacob. That is the first time I saw Rebel split their forces out and get staggered so badly that it was just slim pickings, easy goings. This should be Rise's map now because they're all four going to come off a of spawn but they're so far away from the map. And you see what Rise did, four Lancers are out, bullets are getting flown across the map, downs and damage are being put in. Big shot there by Detox. The second one connects with the down, needs one more here. Sees so exploits bouncing around, but he, well, he bounces out of the ring and gives the final point on over to Rise. They take map number one over Rebel.
Yeah, and I, I, I want to say it was maybe hill number seven, maybe even eight towards that corner where I do believe it was Cartier exploits trying to get deep in the spawn. They got caught on rotation and the next one it was Crack who got taken down shortly after from there on out. They were just singled out. They weren't able to work as a full unit in which that was a big reason of why they were able to come back in the first place. I think the pressure got to them. They realized they were a stone's throw away from tying the game up and they just kind of let it go. Let it slip through their fingers and rise. They had such a big lead, it was only a matter of time. That's something that we saw yesterday. You get yourself such a massive lead, you can kind of slow it down. You can kind of play a little bit more lackadaisy before you got to flip that switch once more. I really do believe that Rebel had such a gamey performance through the mid portion of that map because there was a lot of times we saw two and three players together. They continued to fight with one another. Those final couple of fights after they won that fight at that uh, P, I think it was P7, they win the fight bottom left of the map over there by the big statue. And then all of a sudden, everybody starts rotating up for the close respawn right into the waiting and loving arms of every player from Rise who'd already yep. respawned. They get staggered out there, then they get snagged out a second time after they respawn on the map. It's just one of those things where I just don't know why Rebel, it seems like they lost their patience. It was, they felt so close to victory that they tried to speed things up and you gotta stay with what's winning and what's working. You can't all of a sudden decide that you're gonna have to, you're gonna speed it up and just take Rise out of the game by getting a little faster. Yeah, they got they got to figure out a way to breathe because I don't I don't want to say it I don't want to jinx them but that's that's it's very similar to what usually happens to the Latin American teams Colin I, I've never really heard of it until Gears but I feel like they just want to win so bad they forget their ABCs the fundamentals of the game that got them so far because you said it yourself. They were doing so good up until P7. I was saying it as well. They dropped the lead down to only 13 points. 13 points, Colin. But then they get outscored 51-10, 50-0. And then from there, Rise had full control of the game. They put him in a chokehold, and Rebel was unable to kick out. I really also, Jacob, I need to ask you, is this, does early championship bracket rounds get that much more intense or that much more pressurized uh, if you are a LATAM team because you know that that everybody in your region is like, somebody's got to win one of these last couple of majors. Somebody's got to get us this victory. Paul is the host of the lobby. He has one of the best connections in the history of connections. He has his own server, 6,000 up, 6,000 down. They call him Colin Fiber. Right? People that play on my server know because they see me sit on one ping and they're like, what in God's name? Coming into That's the game fun. here, everybody rolling off a spawn. Cardio will check rushies toward the frag grenades. It's going to be a 3v3 here at the long shot in the platform. Big oh, shot over oh the my top. God. Cardia takes control of the frag grenade side of the map, gets the kill on the rushies, and now Rise. They're scrambling. They're trying to find an answer. Identus pulls the long shot. He ain't even got to move. Now, that was such a nice looking kill. The way he popped off the cover with the quick LT to take out rushies. And I know Rushies was, was ready, but he wasn't ready for that. I, I wasn't even ready to see that. That was disgusting. Disgusting indeed. Matt, round at number two, Overtime Hill toward the electronics. We'll see if there is another 1v1 down at the bottom side of the map toward the frag grenades or not. No, this time we're going to have the 4v4 situation up top toward the long shot. Look at the way Exploit's trying to fly into that position, fly into that cover, trying to get shots onto multiple players. Gets that first down, but he has a teammate there for help with a quick revive. Identus, he's going to back up toward Exploit, but they're both going to find themselves down and out. Rise. Beautiful answer back in round two. Tie it up. Yeah, I don't really know what happened there. The revive just didn't come down. And and honestly, it just sounds like there might have been either one of two things, Colin. Too much communication where they weren't able to really decipher everything that was called out. Or there wasn't enough communication. The players were laying the information about how red they actually were. Because you saw exploits taking a ton of damage. Or at least I saw it from the spectator point of view. I knew a revive was ha going to have to come out sooner rather than later. And just crack wasn't ready. But back to this fight. Rushies with a little bit of a fake and audible at the last second rotating towards plat side trying to get that extra angle but he's marked off so they know exactly where he's coming from How about you take looks like inzem is going to be a little bit in a sticky situation if they try to rotate onto him now we'll see inzem go back to the top side he's gonna get some help here three players of rise have gone up to the mid lane here looks like rebels trying to overtake inzem full red here tries to answer back identives with a wrap gets the first shot on 
And now Identives will continue to help his teammates. 4v1 situation. Rebel might go up 2 to 1. And they do. Yeah. Rise made a drastic mistake there of putting all of their members from the back lane in towards that mid lane. Then Rushies was out wide towards Platt. So as soon as Rebels saw that they had nobody lantering towards the backside, they went out wide, got that extra angle, and really made them pay for the mistake as you see it as well as I do. Overtime, if it comes down to it, back on over towards those electronics. But what is back to normal is that four man from each team going towards the Platt side. Now Inzem throwing out that smoke. He's going to try to go for a flank. He actually hits. That's got him. I mean, that is a huge. That's a brick. That's a cock. Creep block, that's another one. My man's throwing mortar. He's throwing pestle. He's throwing everything on the other side of this team. My goodness gracious. It's him just, I mean, he threw a bookshelf. He threw my laptop. He threw, uh, he threw an entire shelving unit, a car front door like he was Brock Lesnar. Take a look at these shots my man hit. Bagow, bagow. That's what happened. I say like Rock Lesnar, but he took him to Suplex City one Shoot. after the next, man. Enzum is just looking like a beast. I told you, everybody on Rise stepping it up tenfold, looking like that championship caliber form. This could be their event, but they still have two more days to battle through his card. He's putting the shots on Enzum, who's looking like he might escape with those incendiary grenades. He goes down. Cardi with the sniper, putting it to use back to back. Enzum has no more downs. One more. He's going to be taken down. Avexis is out towards the backside. Crack gets burned up. Detox with the headshot. 2v2 for now as Insum gets that elimination towards the backside. And Identive's Ooh. playing around a little bit. He goes far wide, tries to take that first shot, knows that both players are still stacked up on that lane. Inzem marked out to the bottom side, bouncing around. Gonna get shot on with a snub. Full red. Inzem can't take his ability out to the wide. Hit him in the ankle. Hit him in the ankle. Hit him in the ankle. I think I this. this is Troy. I've seen this. Hit him in the ankle. Aww. Uh... Does it do damage, though? I would imagine it. I mean, right? I want to say does, but as I was about to say does, doesn't want it to come out all at the same time. <laughs> just take the shot, Identives. Answer our questions. <laughs> He's just baiting it. Help me. Baiting it right now, though. Oh, the double shot. Calculated. Inzum sees he's red. Going out wide, but Inzum, he has no more downs, but he's not stopping. He's not slowing down. He's not scared. The damage is there. He gets passed out as Cardia deals the final blow. Rushies now has his hands full in this 2v1 situation against two of the most aggressive players on the roster of Rebel. And you can see it. They're playing their numbers right. Going out wide, but Rushies, that just gives him a 1v1 here on the other side. But Cardia backtracks with oh, a little no. bit of damage oh, from no. Identity. No, no, no. No, no, he no, gets no, that no, no, final no. elimination, <laughs> Colin. Colin, oh, what do you see? Nope, nope, too early. Too early. You're down a map. You're down a map, and you're going to do that. Let's take a look. Body shot here on Inzem. That's the second down. He needed pulls the snub. They could have gotten that third down right there, and that would have been nice, but this is what we're looking at, the headshot here. Don't you dare. Boom. Good bait right there. Yeah, I give Inzem credit, though. I give Inzem credit because you have to play to win can't play to just survive and stay alive, but you see the switch track coming out. Rise ah, going for the sniper yet again. Cardio with the frags. Ends up going out wide. This time he gets stunned up, unable to get that elimination, which he normally gets. He's downed out wide. Multiple players fighting for their lives. Revives are out on the side of Rise, but Enzum, he's going to be the first one down. But Avexi's detox soon to follow. Last one alive is Rushies once more, but he meets that same fate. Rebel have stepped it up. They won back to back rounds and have a 4 to 2 lead. Got to be able to keep this momentum up 4-2. Two, two more rounds to go to try to close it out. Try to get it to be 1-1 one, one going into the escalation map number three. We will come into this next round now. See what Rebel can continue to do here. I, I'm really, I'm really color me impressed right now. That is one of the things that I think everybody has to be aware of is that Rise is usually an incredible checkout team. Rebel is using their individualistic skill gap ceiling to just dominate their will, push their will on to the side of Rise. Three players from Rise, they're all still. Oh, they got caught slipping. And Inzem, he'll cook you, baby. He'll cook you. He cooked two, two sausage links right there. That double kill. What, what is what is your go-to actually when you're cooking? My my go. That's what ends up like. Up. My go-to yeah. like what I cook. Yeah. 
I'm a big fan of baked chicken, baby. I put that thing up in the oven after I get a nice marinade on it, stay nice and juicy. You take it out about halfway, put some butt melted butt on top of it, keep it nice and juicy. Bring in some of them smoked artichoke, baby. Come on now, bring the collards in there as well. You gotta have the He might have not have cooked all that, but he at least tried. He got two of them. I think that sounds like like a full a full squad wipe. That's that's what you cooked up. You cooked up the full squad wipe, but Enzo, he's cooking up something yet again in the name of crack as he goes down. Identive soon to follow. Only downs being netted on the side of Rise. Quick revive. Rushy's the only one to fall. But Enzo again! He gets another double kill. Three straight instant kills in that round. All tied up. Can't be doing that kind of stuff. You better be all around whatever it is to get you to six. Have that last player down. Then you can mess around, have a little bit of fun. But it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. And right now, Enzem has proven that he is as fast as any rabbit in any race that's ever been run between him and any turtle on the map. He is burning him up with that incendiary. Enzem goes to the top of the platform yet again. Tagged up a little bit. Goes to the pick there. On to the incendiaries. We'll get them and we'll get them out again. Evie can continues to get these kills. Looks for the positioning. I like that angle where he's, he's kind of going, oh! Bro! I can't believe it. I was about to say, he has to miss one because Colin would have definitely left if he got another double kill. Rushies using that as a distraction, goes out wide. The Lancers are there, but Rushies goes down. Nobody's physically able to help, so he's going to get taken out from a 4v3 to a 3v3 as Exploits gets that elimination onto Rushies. Avexies is out wide, so they do have a mismatch. They got the mismatch, and in some, some reason, tries to get aggressive. That's not going to be the play. Detox gets downed out. Double frags Ooh. being used, but Avexies gets chopped up. Rebel now on Matt point beautiful shot that was one of them leading shots that they was talking about yesterday he knew where that player was going waited for the slide got him as he got on that cubby corner as soon as he took the one my man in got 12 hold up show me the scoreboard he got well how many well one more time well i love you con bro please Yo, how many first bloods con oh Never leave me. If I find you with another casting duo, I'm hunting them down. That's all I gotta <laughs> say. Never leave me because Insom's never leaving those Insom's. He gets them yet again. Rebel, they're not learning. They're not adapting, but this time around, they learned their lesson. They don't become a target. Rushy's going down. Insom soon to follow. Sniper is head hunting its target, but somehow, some way, Vexies makes the play. He gets two. That's forcing Cardia back because he learned his lesson uh -oh. there. He saw his two teammates fall right before his eyes. He said, hold up. Hold up. Up. Let me back up. Let me play this a little bit more safe. And look at how Rebel's playing this. They're going to go super wide here. Maybe try to go for the pick there on to the... Oh, that's down. And now for my finishing touch. There it is. Cardia has got... Yo, my man Cardia. Sacrificing of Xyz to the blood gods. He was the first to show love in this map, and he's the last to show some love in this map. Rebel, they're going to take it 6-4. to four. They're going to tie this massive game up one to one we are gonna have a map three very short lead to decide who takes the lead going into map four don't you dare get up and go beyond that door keep your eyes on the screen we'll be right back Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the break where we are in the middle of our Rebel versus Rise matchup to determine who continues to move on in championship bracket and who has to find themselves in the loser's side of thing. The elimination bracket, the bottom bracket, the go-home bracket, the bracket of all brackets, bracketing. This is a 1-1, though, as we are looking to see which team will take the lead. But before we get to map three, Jacob, what did you see? Who took the advantage? How and why? What was it that caused Rebel to be so successful it was just a full-on team-oriented effort honestly you see time and time again ident is going on cardia making some game saving plays crack and exploit soon to follow and all rise really had was inzum and those incendiary grenades there wasn't a ton of team effort in terms of helping and striking back so I think Rebel has definitely stepped it up in these round-based game mode. It's easy to call in to get lost in the sauce when it comes to control, but now we're going over to Escalation, map number three, and that's a well-balance of both control and execution, so interested to see which version of Rebel is going to come out. My question to you now, Jacob, is you told me it was a total team effort in that map, too. 
Yep. And we saw franchises keys to victory. You want to tell the world what you was talking about when it came to them keys to victory? <laughs> oh, wait, excuse me. You were talking about it, but it was Taylor Reflections Noble that said one of those keys to victory yeah. was Boo Boo. Which one was it? The keep the fight at the winch. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. The Taylor, the Taylor was talking me, crazy. Taylor was out yeah, to talk crazy. So, the fight at the winch, to me, you do want to kind of keep it there if you're Rise. But at the same time, we've seen Rebel. They can stretch the map out. And I think that's what they're going to want to do. They're going to stretch the map out. It's it's not a main focal point that it has to be on towards the wench if you rise, because at the end of the day, it, it's a quick battle, a well-placed flash, a well-placed smoke, and you know how dangerous these players on Rebel can be. So I don't think that's the overall key to victory that Rise wants to keep the fight there, because to me, if you're on fire, it'll be smooth sailing. But if you're not, that's a 50-50 toss-up at times. I'd be curious to see how they go about playing this because uh, both of these teams have some pretty fearsome mid winch players, in my exactly. opinion. The detoxes, the rushies, the cracks, the identives. Inz I mean, you could put, I know Inz is probably going to be playing that 1v spot. I don't think they're going to change up nothing that major this far into the major, but all those guys can play that spot very pretty, perfect picture perfectly. I'll be curious to see who gets the better end of that fight more often than not. If I'm a rebel, do you think there's any chance, not rebel, if I'm rise, do you think there's any chance that rise early puts down a sniper, a torque or something all the way up top if they're losing that mid winch consecutively a few rounds in a row? I think there is a chance, but I want them to be very, very careful, right? Because Identos has proven, especially when it comes to that top portion with the Stern, that is a place that he flourishes. He picks up multi-kills. He's usually the last man standing up at that side of the map, and the amount of clutches he's had on the boat in general from top to bottom is absolutely insane. That's what I'm saying. You can have a driving force with rushes and detox, but because of flashes, utility, and the ability to change things up, it's not a defining factor that it's going to happen on that winch time and time again plus you got to add in the fact that those fourth players you said in them from rise I don't really recall who's going to be going down low from rebel but they're going to also be throwing that additional flash from the low portion of the map which if they don't take their time they don't throw it to perfection one will be better than the other and that's something they can really kind of take advantage of so i do believe rise will have it in the back of their head to put a weapon down but i hope they have that seed planted knowing that that's also something that identives really loves and wants to have happen as well Maybe we see it go into that mid portion of the map where it seems to create a lot of that confusion yep. where you have to throw those smokes. You have to try to get in there and get the quick pick. Get out really fast before anybody gets that Lancer shot on to you. This harbor is going to be pretty interesting. Um, I think the two things that I, I really want to take note of is how the 1v spot is going. In Zem a couple weeks ago, he didn't have a death. And even though Rise had lost, I think, two rounds, Inzem was just playing so defensively where he'd win his 1v to try to keep him in the round. But then instead of trying to, the team that was playing him, instead of over-rotating, going for the triple cap and actually getting a kill on Inzem, it was just they were sitting at the two-to-one hill advantage, and that's how they kept winning rounds like that. And that's what worries me is there is that chance that, that Inzem is playing out of his mind, and they have to make a play like that. They have to put a weapon down in that mid lane, down there in that cut because of the fact that even though he's playing great, they might be getting torched at the winch. They might be getting torched at the stern. So I always like to keep my eye on that 1v spot, especially with a guy like Enzem playing down there. Honestly, it is really telling as well because Enzem also... Or anybody in that situation, what we're talking about in them, they're going to feel that pressure. You said he was making that right decision, backing up, playing defensive, not necessarily overextending, throwing his life away. But at the same time, you're going to have to do something because if you play that defensive, the enemy team could possibly try to go in. So in some is, is one of the prime examples of how to play that 1v1 spot. So I, too, want to kind of keep note, seeing if he's performing like he usually does. But on the top side, I would like to be a little bit more focused on identives because he doesn't necessarily head down for the winch. He's usually that flex player that helps with shots over the top. He goes up top. He just does exactly what the team needs to do and more. Let's see what team gets the most production out of its members here in map number three as they are getting ready to roll out a spawn. We'll be on the backside of Rebel's side of the map. Looking forward, extra flash thrown in toward Rushies. Looks like Rebel's actually going to split their forces, try to favor the top side toward the stern. Identum's up here trying to work in. Beautiful double shot down there. Rushies, last player alive, is going to try to rotate out here. Good job on the breakthrough, trying to just extend the round. 
That is a beautiful little play by Rush. He's, even though he's down, it extends the round. It almost threatens the triple cap domination for a moment. Yeah, he's going to get that capture. That's kind of fine and dandy, but that's neither here nor there. Exploit's going to spawn back up. Get the D cap and the cap down onto ends. I'm trying to push them back. Damage is there as well. If they're going to look to kind of clean that one up, if they're saying capture first, objective orientation mindset is going to be the key here as they're going to be slowly but surely chopping down the lead, which wasn't too much because that early play by Rushies. The push comes in. Ends of Vex. He's leading the charge, but the Lancer damage is out. Identiv is putting so much fire down, but he has to think twice because Rushies is doing the exact same. Rebel, they got the damage they need, and now they're finally pushing up towards the neutral portion of the map to gain in the position, but no deaths for either team just yet. Damage on by both squads, trying to do a little push and pull. Rushies will take over the top side of the winch, add in some damage down toward B. Knows that he's going to get challenged in just a moment. Identifies is right there, onto his six o'clock. Good job playing it safe for his health. Big back A comes out. Rushies rolls back, continues to try to add the damage. Third shot connects and gets the down. We'll go up top to clean it up very shortly. And now Rise will have the definitive advantage in this round with a two to one hill advantage. He'll be able to get that, be able to get the point lead right on back. They're going to continue to pressure across the map. This is a little bit of a danger zone spot for them, though. They're trying to have to deal with him quick. The longer they take, the more chance for the reinforcements to come off of respawn. They're going to come through. Identives gets one, but that's going to be a trade. Cardia not able to come off of spawn fast enough as Rise. They strike first here on Harbor Escalation. 1-0. Rise is in the lead here. Beautiful first round. Detox without a kill to his name, but three assists. I think that kind of goes on the back. In my opinion, that, that round honestly falls on the back of Rushies twice. That initial retake, that initial decap at the cargo, forcing Rebel into a little bit more of a of a stagnant offense where they didn't they had to allow that player to cap up their hill before rejoining the fight, whereas Rise just got to push straight in toward B and then Rushies then challenges the mid winch. Remember gets the training. win there against Identives and then just holds court there for the rest of the round. Those are the things that really turn that round around for me in the favor of Rise. Nice flashes from both of these teams. Rushies gets double flash. The second one's not going to stun him. Misses a crucial shot, which could have been first blood on exploit. The tables have turned. Crack now got to get aggressive. The damage is there from both teams, but it's going to be Rise who are going to be the last one standing as Detox goes back to back on the bench with a little bit of help. Inzum, just like you said, playing aggressive, getting control of the neutral as well. And if Xy's wasting no time, the communication has to be near flawless. Bold talk in hand. You know how deadly he can be. Three straight shots. He drops one. Two more players coming in a trade in downs one's going to be cleaned up but a detox yet again standing strong standing Woo! tall holding his ground pistol fires there you said it yourself one more and that one's going to be in the books cleaned up fresh as can be as rise what one long round one quick round they make it look easy they can do it any which way that you need them to if you're a fan of rise they get it to go in less than one minute damon baird standing tall and standing strong at the home hill of Rebel to get those final few kills. Beautiful call there by Jacob MVPR, ladies and gentlemen. Round three about to come up into the books. Retro Lancer placed out in Zen with only one kill, but no death. That's what I. You see my man stat line? Yep. Take a hot look at Lenny real quick. My man, one kill, no deaths, five assists, though. He's just living. He's making life harder for everybody. He's winning the fights that he has to win. He is putting in the absolute work for his squad. Recaptures on that neutral hill as well, trying to alleviate the pressure at that early point. The sniper goes down towards the mid lane. Rebels trying to go an audible. You talk about the smoke screens, but what about the damage? Avexi's putting it over 9,000 to get a couple downs at Elims. Crack trying to make a sneaky play, but he gets shut down instantly. Four players up, four players down. Triple cap domination potential coming out where Exploits needs to have a big play, a trade. There goes a down onto one. He goes for the next one, but he gets taken down. He doesn't even get to Elim. Now it's up to Cardia, who goes back to back to try to save the round. Beautiful round there by Cardia. Cardia adding in the double kill for the retake on the hill. Now Inzem will take up position here at that mid winch. Looking over those chains, Inzem has the retro in hand. Will actually rotate further and closer up to get that first down. I like this from Inzem. The aggression with the retro out adds in a ton of damage. Putting exploits into the back seat there and puts him down and out for that fight. 
Is this crack just trying to be sneaky? He's just trying to get behind enemy lines, get the decap on the hill because he knows the numbers are not there. He's just trying to buy his three other teammates some time to get in a good spot. But you got a magic exploit just spawning up. Identive's going down. Crack gonna get staggered and bled out. A mistral from a Vexi is gonna allow Rebel to once more stay in the round. But staying alive is different than thriving in the situation. As Rebel, they need to figure out a way to flip this switch. Taking a look here. Top side of the map. I don't think there's much room for error now. Less than a minute to go. That stern is the big point of differential. Go to go to Inzem up there at the stern real quick. Because he's going to be able to retro anybody that challenges the winch. The winch will have a safety net. And anybody that pushes into B is going to get Lancer from the winch. Incoming. They have to stack three people here. It's going to be chain revives. There goes the damage you were talking about. Perfect flash. But another player from Rise is there to get the angle. And there's the thing, Kong. There's no weapon up there. There's no hill up there. Rise immediately turn about face and start to set themselves up on the actual hill. Because at this stage in the game, they can win off of purely one. And look at the defensive stand. I mean, take your best shot right here. Down comes through. Another down about to happen. With Rushy's playing defense, I mean, this is all they need. Look at the way that this man plays his angles, plays the distance game. No way in hell anybody is getting by him. There's a down. There's a kill. Sea Hill secured. That's 3-0 rise. Once again, that, that stat line, it's not something impressive, like, you know, 30 elims, 30 down, but that just means Inzum is playing his life. He's playing every situation careful. And in that round alone, I do believe he doubled up his damage. I do believe he had around like 3,000, maybe even 2,900 on the back of Inzum, going all the way up to 6,700, but exploits at the bottom. 0, 8, and 1. He's not even staggering, leaving people down because that would have him with more assist. Rebel struggling in that teamwork department. Long shot goes out here. And that is a long shot in favor of Rebel. As you see, they still have the retro, whereas Rise will have their incendiaries to play around with. Coming into the initial fight here, Rushies has decided to go to the mid winch. Taking a lot of shots into the smoke, but doesn't get anything to go. There's the stun. Here comes the attempted double pick out. Shots on a boat of those players. Team revives are in and through. Exploits will take the long shot all the way back to their original home hill and basically try to reset here. They're going to try to go for a retake from home with the power weapon now, Jacob. It's their best possible option. You, know, you say that, but when I'm looking at the minimap right now, because I agree with you, that would have been the best option, the best play, but they're trying to have exploits watch over all those boat players, top to bottom, so when they try to put the damage on the players aggressing in this 3v2, they're hoping for a headshot, but a well-placed insim to block off the passage, making it to where if they're going to continue to get aggressive, they're going to take a ton of damage along the way. It's a lot slower around than I thought, though. Rebel's not taking their advantage here. Now they're going to pull up exploits. That's what I was worried about. Leaving exploits in that home hill puts them at a decided disadvantage. He loses a lot of sight lines. He doesn't give his teammates a chance to push up for him to get those body shots for the down. Uh oh, it's just are they getting put in a blender? There we go. Oh, right back. Answer after answer. Headshot with Lance or something you don't see every day, but you talked about how defensive Inzum is playing. That's a prime example. Backing up when he needs to. Getting aggressive when he has to. And once again with the damage there. 2v1 situation. He's just trying to buy that sweet, sweet time. Because if you look at your map, there's an aggressive push on the other side. But Rushy's trying to lead that charge. All he's going to be awarded with, though, is a decap. So Rise are going to get shut down. They're going to be forced to kind of wait for the respawn players to come in and make some sort of a plan. Formulate it with the information that they're able to gather as a Vex, he's a detox, takes that top position. Reset here, Rebel inside of the front of this spawn position. 180 to 144 here. Shot on. Identives, I think, is... I think they abandoned him. I really hate that position. And Cardia backs all the way up inside of the B-Hill and Identive stays up on that pillar. That looks like the same type of play that lost a map one, Jacob. 
Yeah, just not on the same page. It just seems like these two players are trying to make aggressive game-saving pushes. They just have a different idea of how it's going to play out, a different execution strategy as Rise, they are slowly but surely coming back. But if you look at the win condition, they still need that triple neutralization. They're waiting for these players to spawn back up. That way, nobody can make an impact with the spawn shield. But with time draining, they have about 10 seconds to go. Pushing forward, Detox will try to get over to the Sea Hill. Big shot on there with the body shot. Inzem coming up to 6 o'clock. Big body in. shots here. L triggers out. He's going to get inside of the hill. Going for the decap there. The possible neutralization is, but it doesn't come through in time. Round over to Rebel. First round on the board for them after dropping the long shot. Jacob, is that a preview of things to come? I mean, I wouldn't say it's a preview. I think it's too soon to tell, but with the hills switching up, that's going to make it to where if they're able to get that sniper on the low side of the map, it's going to be a little bit more of an impact than it was before with no weapon really being down there. The only hill is in the wide open. Now they can really take those covers, go home hill to home hill, and it be an actual viable strategy. They still need to execute, which is something they've been struggling with. Incendiaries and Boltox down now, Jacob. I don't know what the best play call is for Rebel to keep that kind of momentum in their favor because now Rise will start building up that second half home hill, giving a guy like Inzem a new weapon to play with. Bypass the incendiaries off the initial rise. They're trying to defend the hill as best as possible. They get an elimination on one. Avexis gets that down on another, but he gets downed as well. Unable to go forward. Inzem almost, almost getting taken down with that shot. But fortunately enough, he goes back to back with two great shots. Exploits has that sniper in hand. And this is where with him, if as long as he can kind of hide the information of him having the sniper, I, I think that'll be great. But he just needs to be able to work with the team. And you see the whole team moving towards the top side of the map and this is where I, I think they're gonna fall short but they make a quick audible a quick switch and i talked about that home hill to home hill strategy that's what they're gonna play for looking for a retake here you see the two to one hill advantage in favor of rise right now 30 points getting even bigger with every passing moment exploits is gonna maybe try to rotate up here toward crack and help out toward the e hill looking forward she's that first player try to come around the corner gets the kill See what they're going to be able to do. There's the incendiary by Rush. He's to shut that down. Crack will get burned alive, and that's going to signal exploits to back on down. He's going to go to the bottom side of the map. He's going to get rotated on. Those are a couple of shots that exploits doesn't normally miss, but I mean, the, those missed shots right there, two of them, one on Rushies would have stopped the incendiary later, and now a second one on the rotating players trying to come for his throat would have, without a doubt, in my opinion, changed the, the absolute genetic makeup of this round, and now he's going to try to help out fight against Enzem, and misses another one! Very uncharacteristic, like, but Enzem with those quick shots, body shots finally going to be hit, but somehow, some way, he holds his ground call, and 10 toes down, standing tall, they eclipse that 200 point mark, already with a 3 to 1 in rounds, and with this one, they will be on map point. Steps away from going up two to one as Detox gets another elimination. Time slowly but surely counting down. They're not able to make a team push. Two individuals across the map. In fact, they just don't have the numbers on the map to make it happen. Rise. They will be able to close this round and, like I said, go up four to one. Map point. Beautiful finality to that round by Rise. The way that they were able to play across the map, it was almost like they were like, look, you can give exploits the sniper. If he's not going to hit his shots, we have nothing to worry about. They played that entire second half of that round like that. Once he missed a couple in a row, they basically just stayed on their side of the map. They never threatened the home hill. They were just getting players to get go down as they come off a respawn. That's a scary sight for any team if that's how coordinated they're going to be. And Bolt talks down. Ensigns are going to be locked. And that to me says, Rise, they're, they're done playing around. They're done messing around. We're going to lock down any opportunity you have at any counter play. But it put the Marsha up top. I don't even know how to feel about that one. How do you feel, Colin? I trust you. Prove your worth. I like it. And I like okay. the fact that I think it's Rise's attempt at making making life a little bit more worse even if exploits gets the long shot if they have the marks in the top map control they can do the same thing they did last round and win this five to one it, it really plays into their favorable style in my opinion mm. 
Detox wins the 1v1 against Identives. Marksa in hand. Knows the players are floating around, but finally gets the marks he was looking for. Every player basically spotted out at one point or another. No one able to hide. No information is going to be a secret. And neither is exploit. as the marks are already being put to use. Rise on map point. One more shot to connect with the head. A crack would have been back to respawn as well. That's what I'm talking about. Detox now has that mark to basically lay waste to anybody coming across the middle of the map down toward that first half B hill. Avexis has the long shot. They can bring him in for the extra defensive stand here. He's got to look at that. He's leaving that exactly where he knows that player can up A around the corner. He brings his entire body back down. And then the guy finally up A's after he takes that away. Yo, Avexis can do it in any way, baby. I mean, look at the way that he just played that. He just, he just played him like it was a game. He was playing checkers. Of X, he's a playing chess. Throws the inside, forces him to up A into the other cover. Gets the body shot for the down and then just cleans him up. I, li I like how he's not even looking for the players at the winch. He's looking to affect the fight all over. Body shot's going to be hit on crack. Ends him quickly. Switches on over to the bowl talk to clean that one up. Triple cap domination underway. Three players of Rebel trying to contest it. Rushies gets one. Miss rolls. He gets taken out. Avexis gets one. He goes back to back like he's on the cover of Lethal Weapon as Rise and the map five to one and take a 2-1 lead in the series. I don't know if keeping the fight on the winch was the right idea for Rebel. I don't know. Didn't work out for him in the first half. Didn't work out for him in the second half. And they put players at stern, at mid lane, at mid winch. Those are the things that Rise did picture perfectly the entire map. Just winning their team fights. Forcing players into bad positions. Rebel... I, I'm sorry, Jacob. They're not going to be able to win this series, and I don't know if they're even going to be able to beat Team Queso after this series if they don't learn to play together again. They did it great in map one and kept it very close. Execution, you can skirt away with that individualistic play style, with that individual skill, but they also had a ton of team fire. They also had a ton of help around the map, making sure that kills were cleaned up, that downs were ensued by each other. Here on Harbor, I spent about two rounds watching exploits just, just chill out. Suntan, I got my long shot. I'm going to be good. Everything's fine. And his team is just getting play yard bullied around the map by all four players' eyes. And they're like, as long as you aren't hitting shots, I don't know what you're doing over there, but it's helping us more than it's helping you. I promise you that. Is that more so Rise playing the situation perfect, knowing that he has the sniper? As long as we're quick, we're fast, we're aggressive on another side of the map, and he doesn't hit those shots? Because it, it, it kind of boils down to that, whether he hits his shots or not. That puts a lot of pressure on the exploits, because you got to imagine, if he hits shots like that, that makes it easier for pushes like that to come through. But it's when he doesn't, and you get flanks and opportunities like this, where you're just able to really fluster them and get towards the backside. And I almost think the opposite, right? I don't think Rives won that because of the fight going down on Wenge. I think they won it because Rebel switched up the strategy, putting the sniper in the middle, but they didn't win that fight either right and they had nothing really to switch it up there was nothing they could really put up top to really make everybody have that be a focal point i think maybe a drop shot but i think that's too big of a gamble for them even if rise is playing the situation they say look he's got the long shot we got to play to the other side of the map we got to be quick we got to be aggressive at what point is it then incumbent upon rebel to answer that play style i mean trying to think and assess that I, I feel like not just rebel but if you're gonna we've, we've said it time and time again if you're gonna be the best you have to beat the best regardless of the play style rebel has to prepare they have to be able to adapt because right now in round number one rolling out of spawn they might not be able to adapt they might not be able to handle that play style but throughout the course of the game you have to make those adjustments you have to make those changes throughout your your actual strategy, putting players here, putting weapons down there in order to actually have an impact in terms of changing your strategy. And overall, round after round, it seemed like Rebel was kind of doing the same thing. Their adjustments might have been minor. In fact, they were too minor that Rise were making their own changes and always staying a couple of steps ahead, not just one. And I'm sure a lot of that credit also goes to the man behind the scenes. Uh, Detox said that he doesn't get enough credit. He said that he's he's the best coach in the game, the one and the only affinity. I'm sure that he's probably watching a screen share and a Discord. They're talking about every possible move that they can see. 
And I'm sure Affinity's letting him know, look, hey, you got to settle down. You got to do this. You got to do that. Because he's probably seen every strat in the book because he's had to play against some of the most strat heavy teams in all of Gears history in his tenured and storied career. So this to me really is just, I really look at it as Rise kind of being one step ahead right now. Rebel was fantastic in that checkout. I'm not taking anything away from him in that execution, but in the two maps that they've lost, they have looked like four individuals. They have looked like four guys that have decided they're not going to help each other. They're not going to be together. They're going to play whatever game they want to play and just try to get a win off of, off of sheer gun skill. And that's not going to work against teams like rise. It just, it will not, not this weekend, not by the way they're playing. Yeah, it almost even seems like rebel. They don't have their roles. And we talk about everybody on every team has to be able to do everything. But when you are at a spawn, you pick up a player because of their specialty, something they excel in, their strengths versus the weaknesses and how you as a team are able to cover all those fronts. It almost seems like there's a lack of trust within this Rebel roster. And that's why every single person is trying to be hero in a lot of those situations. Instead of Crack, just trusting his teammates to pick up those E-limbs, he's going ahead, switching to his Nasher and trying to get his hand sturdy and identives the leader i feel like that's a lot of pressure on one person to make sure everybody is following suit and following in their roles because you and yourself going against these top caliber teams specifically rise in this matchup you have to worry about you you have to worry about identives you have to worry about how you are going to react to these situations so when you have to play for three other people or at least have to glance over your shoulder time and time again to make sure everybody's in the right spot at the right time you are going to miss timings you are going to have missteps and mistakes and going against the top caliber teams like we're mentioning they're going to make you pay more than ever before look i'm gonna bring it in and i'm gonna keep it real with you jacob you you hit the nail on the head you know what the basis and the foundation and the concrete and the, the everything that keeps a good relationship going keeps a good team any kind of relationship really it don't just matter if it's a team in an esport trust it is it is probably there's two words in the world that are more important than any others. One's a four-letter word, and it's love. The other one's a five-letter word, and it's trust. You got those two, baby. If you got those two on a team, in a relationship, whatever it might be, you are going to find yourself some some form of success. And right now, it, it you said it doesn't look like trust. I, I have to agree with you. It doesn't look like they're playing as a unit. They're not playing together. They're not believing that each other is going to make the plays that they have to make when they have to make them. I mean, it is the exact opposite when you see teams like Rise, Pioneers, Knights on your screen, United on your screen at any given moment in time. Yeah, and, and I, I think people don't really realize how much of an impact trust in general does for your team because it allows you to look at different spots of the map. It allows you to look and, and think of different strategies because I can do this because I trust my teammate to do that. And, and I think that's something that in moments they do trust each other when they're on fire. You could see the shines. They're shooting for each other. They're wolf packing to perfection. But when one thing goes wrong, it seems like they start back in square one and they have to rebuild that trust from one another. As long as they can minimize that, I feel like like they'll have their fair chance of not only upsetting these teams, but making it far in this championship bracket. Let's see if they can turn it around here. Map number four. It's going to be ritual control and both teams will have to get a little gamey here. Rise if they want to be able to finish the series off. Rebel if they want to be able to extend it to a map number five. There's plenty of toys on this map that Rebel is very fond of. They've got the Torque Bow. They're at the altar. P1, P7 if you are keeping count in the scorebook. And then you got the Fragmentation Grenades, the opposite side of the map right there at the Ritual area. Just curious, Jacob, this initial point as you come out of spawn. Do you get a little aggressive? Do you try to overwhelm or do you try to be a little bit smarter? Do you try to play around the middle of the map, play through the middle of the map, force your opponents into understanding there might be a double push coming? Yeah, what you got to do is kind of have that base type of strategy. You got to play up until the 50 mark, right? You, you move up and then what you see, what your teammates spot out, what the vocal communication is like, you have to make those quick audible adjustments. And that's why trust is so important. Rushy sees there's no contestation towards the backside. It flash in from Inzum. And that's why he's able to hold his ground for the majority of it. Switching back to his flash to perfection. Keeping Rebel on their toes. Cracks going to be the first one down and out, but it does 
doesn't take long for Rebel to try to fire back. That's going to be Exploits, who not only gets one, but he gets two. Looking for number three with the help of Identives and Cardi as Rebel. They'll have the initial they're looking for. That's the kind of initial they needed. That's the kind of initial they want. Okay. I was, about to, I was like, why? I thought, why? I thought you honestly died for a second with the way you, you cut yourself off. Colin, Colin I didn't know. Are you coming I didn't, back know, I didn't know why you slid past him. I said, brother, he's trying to, you're trying to give a torque up. Why are you sliding past the man now? Identives, though. Big torque play here. Hip fire shot on a detox. Beautiful job there with the stick. Now going for the active. Hits the next one. Identives, two bolts in, two bolts out. Now, a Rushies will try to get a win here against Exploits, but Rebel playing back away from him. Rebel trying to get another kill here, trying to dominate this early sector. P1, continue to hold on to a point lead, going into P2. Identives, he's reloaded that last bolt, I think. He yep, 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 did it again. <laughs> did it one more again right there. Crack's getting bled out. Forced to kind of take himself out of this one, get back to that respawn screen that much faster. One torque bow left in the quiver of a Vexi. Sometimes that's all he needs, one opportunity to let that bow fly, and you'll get one, possibly two, depending how close together they are. As you can see, multiple members of Rise trying to get the spots on the players of Rebel. That way there's nobody sneaking around. All the information is there, and they can formulate some sort of a defensive strategy. <laughs> that was nice. Beautiful job there. Vexies gets that pick. Now they're going to try to find Crack. Crack is going to be full red here. Going to the back of that cubby corner. You see what Vexies is trying to do. Use that snub along with the teammate to get that down. Let him bleed out on the ground. Continue to keep them staggered. Continue to keep them off the back foot. And just like that lickety split quick fast and in a hurry. Oh, as quick as a hiccup. Rise is taking the lead. And they're about nine seconds away from doubling up the scoreline here early in this one. I like that flash towards the side. Detox slowly waiting in the rings to strike. Vexy's gonna get shut down, but that's almost across the map. That's not really gonna affect this one as it's still a 2v2. The Inzim and Detox are gonna come out on top and you can see a Vexy's and Rushy's trying to stay alive. The revive's being forced. In fact, they're looking to turn and burn. They get the call. They're formulating a sandwich straight from the kitchen. Colin and Vexy's getting the damage, but he gets shut down by Cardia. Rushy's and the rest of the crew still trying to put out that DPS as everybody is abandoning the hill. They're abandoning the scrap time because they know the points for next is so much more. Rise was trying to make that sandwich. Rebel shuts it down. They got out the ham, the brzeup. They got a little bit of that side dough out. Boy, they was getting the mustard out of the fridge, and all they found was that they ain't had no bread. They got shut down because they ain't had no bread. Couldn't make a sandwich out of no bread. You ain't going to put that. You ain't just going to fold it up. All right? I've never been a believer in putting that cheese in the middle of a piece of meat and then rolling it up. That just, that's just weird to me. Get honest with you. I don't know. I like the way a dent would be shooting the shots over the top, but it's the reinforcements that mean so much more as a double down is going through. Detox trying to turn and take out his enemy, and there goes one. Still bouncing around. Movement like a unicorn, a mythical beast to be able to stay alive as long as he did, but finally he gets shut down, and these are the moments that Rebel needs to be able to hang their hat on. Only 20 points away. They have a potential at the majority of this time. It's just one defensive effort. You stop right here you take away the lead rebel inside of the hill now playing defense to the backside shots out toward Inzem, trying to slow his roll as he comes into this next push flashes are going to come out from the right hand side looks like rise is going to go for the initial retake at the close respawn here exploits will roll up toward crack maybe try to help him out frag grenade goes off the back of that pillar Inzem rolls away from it is full red but will not go down they get the kill on exploits as well rise with a beautiful retake here and Cardio with another kill needs one more, maybe a little bit of help to get that next one, but all that's left is trash time, Jacob. This will be very close as we rotate in on over to point four, that mid neutral lane point at the top side of the map now. 90 to 81, nine point differential, favor of Rise. Rise already inside of the hill as well. And it looks like they tried to rotate one person at least up into the hill to go for that initial neutralization. High ground, what's interesting me, it's just a little bit more, and that's what Rise is able to contain is Identives. He's at least trying to keep it contested. The damage, the pepper is there as Vexy's trying to put that shot over the top. 
Well placed Flash from Exploit to alleviate the pressure. The down's gonna come in. Flashes towards the backside. And Vexies gets taken down. Teammates are there to try to make it happen. But Rushies goes in. He instantly gets taken down. That puts the separation between Inzim and Detox. Two different sides of the map. But that's not gonna slow him down. That's not gonna stop him as Inzim gets the help just at the right time as a fresh respawn of Vexies appears. Inzim now. Gonna bounce up, go for the up A, hits that first shot, gets a big brick there, but the nade is in! Three up and three down, Rebel leading this fight, and now they get the third and the fourth. My goodness gracious, good God almighty, another good win there by Rebel. Cardi with the new torque is gonna try to rotate it over to crack very quickly. That's pretty dangerous because it looks like Ryze actually respawned on that side of the map. Him getting aggressed on probably gets the shot that he needed. His spots are over towards the top. Crack has to make a decision. Which grouping am I going to help? He's hesitating, and that hesitation costs so much. Two of his teammates go down. Crack's being forced back. They're not able to work together, and that's the thing we keep talking about. It's moments like that when you have a decision to make, you make the wrong one, and it costs you so much. As Rise, they're able to kind of tie it up, but only for a few seconds as Rebel once again takes the lead back. Rebel being very gamey here. They want to send it to a map number five. Lancer fire out by Rise. They're going to try to get downs on these two players, trying to rotate over to P5. Be the top right-hand corner of your mini-map is where that next hill will spawn. Rushies will see one down. They still have a little bit of an advantage here. Cardi is going to be full red. Down in the backside. They're probably going to let both of those players bleed. Now three players possibly bleed out. Detox needs some help here. Big shot on, but Rise is already in the hill. They get the kills, and they have the close respawn. Best possible situation here. Rise will retake... Rise will retake the hill, the close respawn, and the lead. Rebel will have to come back into this next initial fight here. As everybody lines up at the altar and will have to try to make either a rotation oh, through the top side of the map to try to get back in. It's taking too long. Yeah, it's taking a hot minute to get across the map right now. At least 20 seconds being picked up by Rise before anybody rotating on over, but now they make the mad dash. They try to converge onto one spot. Detox and Rushies get taken down by Crack and Exploits. Only identified falling on the side of Rebels, so they still have an advantage here against the Vexies. And they go in Exploits with a quick up A. Ends him with a flank, but he's also getting flanked. Kill after kill, falling in way of Rebel as they finally strike gold on the hill. But there's only a few seconds left on it, so they're going to have to be forced with another decision. How much of this time do you capture before you rotate on over to next where Rise looks like they're beating you to the punch? Identives with a torque bow, revving it up, gets the heady oh on the Wolvex. He's beautiful shot there. We'll shut one down, but Detox, he's in his face. I believe Identives got the bow on his back just in time to not drop it. So the bow is back off of respawn. Nobody has a chance to get back into it. This will be Cardia rotating over to the hill now. Rebel down by a few points. We'll need this early goings to get back into the lead. Identives here with, I believe, one other player. Crack trying to rotate over to the close respawn. Hold on to it and force Rise into a bad spot. Crack will go down. Identives in for the quick revive. They both take up position here, looking to forward toward both members of Rise. Shot miss there. Identives needs another big chunk. There it is. There's the first down. And the second shot hits the big full spread. The revive is through and true. Rise has won the hill fight, but Rebel won the respawn area. And now we have a chance for Rebel to fight right back into this and maybe retake the lead almost instantaneously. Yep, you see immediately as they fight and win that one, they converge, they spread out to take the spawn right back, and it's Cardia. 10,000 damage, 767, putting in a lot of work for the squad. And you can see why. He, every time he gets that power whip in his hand, he immediately trades it over to one of his teammates, knowing that he has his role down and set. He's going to support everybody, put shots on anybody under the sun. Frag towards the backside. Another elimination being picked up as Detox had yet taken down. Inzum's being forced back. Rushy's being put in a blender. He's not able to lend the helping hand that he wants. As Inzum gets it down, finally is going to be shut down. As Everybody trying to make that mad dash because that was just a fight for the frag grenades. There's still more rotations to make. See what he can do here. Identives will go down. Next set of rotation in. Rise after that first down. They're going to try to find more success. Continue to rotate across the map. Now they're going to pull off and call off the dogs in this fight. They're going to get back into that torque bow into the P1 area. Back there at the altar. Torque bow in the hands of Avexis. He could get a good couple of kills early shut this down give them the advantage get them over the 200 point marker early in this one first frag grenade comes out no connection needed with the flash damage from the torque bow is there for the answer now looking tags up crack that's what they needed now 4v3 2v4 as a matter of fact is 
Identives is also down. There's the first down coming through for Cardio, but he's going to be traded out immediately. And Rise, exquisite little defense here. Exquisite, a little beautiful play by Rise to shut it down and to continue their reign of terror. Yeah, but with 45 seconds left on this hill, you know, Rebels just kind of spawn back up and make that push. You see Identive exploits crack all right in front of you. Cardia going for a little flank attempt and making sure that Detox did not join the fray. Frag grenades in the hands of Inzim. Torquebo being revved up. And Vexies connects with yet another one. Back A from Rushies. Frag grenades going to cause the team kill, but the down is out. Exploit soon to fall. Cardia, the only one to get some sort of a footing in this fight. He's just trying to go for next. There's not enough time left. He is going to make the right play as everybody else from Rebel is going to get the spawn to follow suit. Looking for the next rotation here. 176 to 215. This is about a 20 or 35 point differential. Excuse me. This will be Exploits now. Backside of the hill looking for another shot on. Detox full red now. Needs the help from Avexis. They're going to try to bait him into the up A. Gets the shot on, but not enough to get the down. Now we're going to be able to look for another set of slays. It's Rushies on the backside of that cover. Rushies now putting in the damage that best he can. His players rotate and roll in. Another down, another cleanup. Cardia last alive to the backside of the spawn now. Now, looking forward, he needs the ability to win a fight to try to keep the close respawn in favor of Rebel. But with that last cleanup, Rebel not only has lost the hill, they've lost the close respawn. And Rise, they're well on their way to 300. And take Herculean effort. They got to start contesting these hills. And honestly, they got to start winning and getting the position on some of these hills. And even if they're not racking the scoreline, because that's what Rise is doing. They're setting up on these hills. And Rebel is giving them so much time. They're taking so much effort to try to formulate the push. Is the torque bow is going to connect? There goes the window of opportunity as Exploits makes the play on the Detox. Crack gets shut down. Avexis is going to fall. The revive hasn't come through just yet. So Crack is just waiting on the other side of the map. That one, he's going to bleed out. So even though they did get eliminations to stagger out Rise, they did it better. They were able to stagger out Crack just long enough. But Ooh. another Torque Bow connection, but another flank. This is just back and forth battle. I detox now rotates inside of the hill. Just a few points left on it. 20 seconds. Could get him to 270. Gets him very close to the victory lane here. Detox will rotate over after picking up the new torque bow. They know that the next point is going to spawn in about 15 seconds or so. If they were to bleed this one dry, they're trying to get players into position. To go for a retake. And as a matter of fact, I like this play by Rise. Rise rotating over for the close respawn here. They want to be able to get their reinforcements into the fight as quick as humanly possible. Inzim has a little bit of a fight here at the altar. He's going to be tagged up full red. Hasn't gone down just yet. Will go around that pillar. Try to play it safe. He's going to get, continue to get challenged. Here comes Rise into the retake position. 70 seconds left. Detox goes down as he slides in. Identives hitting big body shots here to get the chunk. Gets the down. Everybody down for Rise. Everybody out for Rise. Rebel. They hold on to the hill, but they need a big, long stay here. They need to be able to play picture-perfect defense if they want to get back into this. Yeah, they need to win two more of these fights. The first one's going to allow them to keep racking up the scoreline. The next one is as Rise fights for the scrap time, but with players falling, crack out. Exploits gets dropped. Identives trying to be the hero, and he does. He gets that elimination, but Rise, they're not slowing down. They have multiple members still making an impact on the map, but Identives and Exploits, they're looking like a new one-two punch combo. Elim after Elim, pushing Rise back, defending that hill, but this is where they said they needed two. There goes one, and now one more to hold on to the scrap time that'll put them within reach of tying the game up now you see exploits trying to stay alive as long as he can Rody strafing around rise continuing to get kills around the hill and with 26 seconds left they need to be able to hold on to that they are still down by about 30 cardio to the front side of the hill is getting tagged up from multiple angles he's gonna get shot on get taken down and he will go out rise back in favor Lexi with the Torpo, misses that first pick. 10 seconds left, gets him into the 280 area. Rebel's going to have to start being perfect. The Vexies will shoot the Torque over the top. Goes for the splash damage. Crack rolls out. Goes for a big shot. Hops the top and goes down as he drops. A Vexies bounces in. Looking for one more. Couldn't get it to go. Now Exploits has to be able to play defense here to the backside of the hill. But Rise has the numbers. They have the favorable and advantageous position. And, and Exploits tries to rotate around that cover. I don't. He stayed out of cover for so long that he just ends up going down to the damage. 
He was just trying to reposition. Three, four members of Rise threatening. Trying to get the Elim. Multiple trying to go wide. And Vexes finds himself in a very peculiar situation. He goes down, but Identive's taking too much damage. He knows he has to touch the hill. Detox once again makes the game defining play as Rise close out map number four and take the series three to one. Unbelievable job there by Rebel. Once again, in control against one of the best teams on the planet on control in Rise. Stay very close. Stay very gamey. It boils down to a few mistakes here and there. Things that you have to clean up. But now, Rebel, you got to clean them up in the go-home bracket. You got to clean them up in the re elimination side of things. Because Rise, they win it in four. And they move on in that championship bracket, still undefeated on the weekend. A couple teams here really trying to define their legacy for these last few events for Gear Z Sports. One of them being Rise of Vexies. Since Rise came into the scene, you can make him be a one for one, the face of the team. And he is not going to go down without at least one championship this season as the rest of his team also taking that championship caliber form, working together. And honestly, I love it because you could see when Rebel is working together, they have a fighting chance, but it's Rise who are doing a good job throughout all four of the maps, even the one that they lost, of shutting them down, stopping the momentum dead in its tracks and start to build their own time and time again. Rise does a fantastic job to really pick themselves up by the bootstraps. Every time they lost the lead, lost a rotation in that map number four, they were able to gather themselves, get back into the fight, and basically yep. use their numbers to the best of their advantage, Jacob. And, and really, I cannot wait to hear what the best analyst desk on the planet has to say about it. I know they've probably been chomping at the bit. They probably recorded more mistakes than I have, and I know I've been making all my hash marks right here. So let's hear from those fellas. Let's hear from the best there is in the business. Analyst Desk, take it away. My man, Colin. Thank you so much, my friend. Good job to you and PR. As always, fall out here alongside Ryan and Franchise to break that one down. You already know we had to bring Fran on for the post-game analysis, given the fact that, you know, it's kind of his former team. But Franchise, not looking perfect. Not the 3-0 dominant win Rise would have liked. Yeah, it's not. Um, but one thing that I've, I'm finding interesting is that Rise is looking really good on Escalation. In the past, you know, that's kind of been a, a struggle for them. I mean, they weren't re really winning Escalation against good teams. If they can keep winning Escalation, I mean, it's a good sign for me. I feel like they've always been a good control team. So that I, I, that might be the go-to game mode to, to get them to a championship this weekend. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, Escalation, turning things around, might get them there, might help them get over the hump. And, you know, Ron, I want to ask you kind of a follow-up to that question. You know, do you think it's Rise looking a little bit slow on execution, or is Mexico and the Latin region just that good at execution? Because that seems to be a theme. Yeah, I mean, this Rebel team is, is definitely good at execution. You know, guys like Identism have been playing execution since he was like a, a little kid, right? <laughs> the guy knows this game mode very, very well. So to me, I mean, we talked about it in the pre-show, like execution is technically Rise's worst mode. They still have a winning record in that in Pro League, but it was, you know, when it comes to like control and escalation in Pro League, it was like 11 and 2, 11 and 3, right? And, and execution was like 7 and 5. So it was still a winning record, but definitely the mode they've seen the most losses on. We kind of, in the predictions, talked about it too. If we did see them losing one map, we thought it'd probably be the execution. That, that's exactly what happened. So I think that's definitely the mode they should probably Probably tighten up on. I think that, that Fran is totally right in the sense that they're looking very good on escalation. We already knew they're a really good control team, so I think if they can tighten up that game mode, they're going to be very tough. Yeah, and Fran, as we jump into the highlights here, as a former captain of this Rise squad who always prided himself in being a great execution leader and strat caller, does that make you die inside a little bit here in that Rise's worst game mode is execution? Yeah, I mean, the thing, is, thing about it is, like, the roster's made up of, like, I mean, you know, not up-and-comers because they're, you know, they're all veterans now, but, you know, these are guys that kind of made a name for themselves in a, respawn, in a respawn world, you know, of, of Gears of War. So um, they're, they're, they're better at those modes, at, you know, but you also have Rushies, and, and Rushies did have a pretty good experience with uh, UE, so I, I feel like they should rely on him more when it comes to that game mode, see what ideas he has. And, um, and just knowing Rush from the past, I mean, he's not afraid to, to, to voice his opinion. Um, and just switch it up. Sometimes you just got to go away from from what you you're used to, what you're comfortable with, and just try something new. 
And, um, you know, we're seeing that in Escalation. I, I know they're not really doing different things, but this makeup of the team is is showing that they're, they're better at these respawn game modes. And one thing they have to their advantage as well is that their coach is Affinity, right, who has been a player who's very successful in the execution game mode as well. So I think if anyone can take their team, make some adjustments and, and keep it moving, it's definitely going to be a guy like Chris. So I think that they're in very, very good hands there when it comes to sort of making execution adjustments. And I agree with Jose, like I said, they have someone that, that has, you know, played UE and, and played execution at a high level as well. Yeah, and it wasn't a stomping in execution by any means. Six to four in the overall score. So close games, Rise certainly has the prowess. And I agree with both of those points. You know, obviously Rushy's back in his lethal gaming days and UE playing alongside Mentz and others. And of course, Affinity. You know, I had a chance to team with Affinity back in Gears 2, and he was kind of our secondary strat caller. We, we'd be up every single night, you know, in, uh, in lobbies going over strats, and he has a brilliant mind for execution, a brilliant vision for the game mode. So I think the impact is certainly there. But then we go to map number three in Escalation and Franchise. This is where you said Rise really showed uh, like they turned a new leaf here. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of called in like the keys of victory to keep the fight in winch for Rise, just because Detox and Rush are, are great in those positions. Rebel quickly went away from that to put a weapon in the middle, but you know, sometimes when when you're feeling yourself, like they just not you, you can do not uh, you can do no wrong basically, and um, and everything was just going smoothly for them on Harbor. You know, they had the teamwork down. They were making the plays they needed to do, and they were getting the trip caps. You know, that that map's not always the easiest um, uh, map to get trip caps on, but but uh, they, they just made quick work of uh, Rebel. Yep, and then game four on control. Ryan, back and forth. Rebel showed like maybe they were going to bring it back, but Rise is able to close out. Yeah, I mean, that's what you kind of expect, right? This Rebel team, we knew it was a very, very strong team, and they can still make a lot of noise at this event. But heading into this, this was our number one seed versus a team that was kind of middle of the pack. And that's usually what those sort of contending teams, number one seeds, tend to do, right? The map will get close, the map will get close, and then sort of they'll start to pull away inch by inch. And that's kind of what happened there with Rise. So that's kind of what you expect to see. Like I said, this is a very, very strong control team. This team is so, so good in respawns. So uh, like I said, not, not a lot of surprise. We came into it saying they're going to probably win all the respawns. If they're going to lose one, it's probably execution. And that's, that's what happened. That's right. Rebel trying to, got so close to forcing a game five. They lose by 60 points in control. Rise able to close it out three to one. We'll take a look at the overall map score as well. And fairly close games, minus the escalation. 6 4 on execution, 300 218, 300 241. So Rebel certainly also proving that, hey, maybe they can compete with a top squad. The number one seed, obviously, coming into this competition from Pro League as well, Fran. I mean, do you think Rebel has what it takes to make a run through loser's bracket and maybe crack in a top four? Um, possibly. Um, I mean, I, I don't see it. I don't see them playing with a lot of confidence. I know this match was close. They have the roster to make this match close, but I feel like they're not playing as a unit to really take them far in this tournament right now. Ryan, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think that's spot on. It's such a big part of these tournaments, right? Is playing for each other, playing as a unit. You can have all the skill in the world, but if you're not playing together, at the end of the day, you can only really go so far. Yeah, that's right. Even though Ident is all the experience he brings to this roster, playing with Cardia and Crack and others who are so incredibly talented, you know, they have the skill, they have the talent, but at the end of the day, there's teams like KCP and Rise who have something different. It's a brotherhood. And uh, it seems like that maybe that component, that aspect, shooting for each other, playing for each other is maybe missing a tiny bit with this Rebel squad, but we certainly know they have what it takes. So I'm excited to see if they can catch some fire in the loser's bracket. Interested to see what the loser's bracket looks at. We're going to look at winner's bracket first. Let's go ahead and pull that up and see how things have shaped out looks like united makes quick work of team k so as we expected 3-0 win rise well they dropped one map they're going to go on to play against united in the winner's bracket semifinals that'll be at 5 and 7 p.m eastern respectively so i'm so excited for that matchup meanwhile we have not yet played out the pioneers versus abuelos match and knights versus defiance pk versus defiance that's kind of the second match outside of rise rebel that we thought maybe defiance can put up a fight against pk maybe even win so i'm excited for that one meanwhile let's flip over to the losers bracket and here's how things are shaking out in the losers it's gonna be team Kessler versus casa de papel i think we'd all agree they should be able to take that one but they're never say never meanwhile rebel versus the challenger last chance qualifier team abyss hive and fury one waiting to see the loser of pk versus defiance and abuelos versus the kansas city pioneers and in that loser's bracket i want to ask one quick question for you uh ryan in that loser's bracket if you had to pick one team to really make a run maybe even make it to loser semis or loser's finals who's it gonna be 
Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I mean, I think that a team like maybe, you know, playing to losers, like a team like Team Queso, a team like High, maybe even this Defiance team, if they find themselves in losers bracket, are sort of teams that can catch fire. They have teams that play off momentum. So to me, that could be maybe some of the dark horses. I mean, kind of heading into this event, we looked at a team like Defiance, and they're not, they're not in losers bracket. They can still beat PK, obviously, but they're a team that we looked at to say, like, that's a team that a lot of people probably aren't expecting a ton of, but have players that have very, very good pedigrees, right? Have players that have been there before that don't get shaken up on Saturday and Sundays. So those are the kind of teams I'm looking out for. Just a lot of players who have been there before, right? Pro League, those records are very important because it shows you kind of the form they are heading into it. At the same time, though, you, events are different, right? We all know that by now. We've done this enough times. I don't care if it's land, online. At the end of the day, when the money's in the line, people do play differently. So those are the kind of the guys I look out for. Kansas City Pioneers, case in point. Well, good to look forward into the loser's bracket. However, it's all about what's coming next. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the tell of two tales. If you're a fan of the Mexico-leading Pittsburgh Knights, or if you like the veterans, the savvy vets in defiance, Kenny Bounce and Co. about to be live against the Pittsburgh Knights right after this.